Hi guys! So today I thought I would do something a little bit different, maybe a little fun, also maybe a little mortifying for me. I want to go back and rewatch my very first YouTube video, which is a Christmas book haul, and laugh at myself, number one, and also to see if I've actually read any of the books that are in the video. I know I've read at least one, but the other ones I'm not really too sure about. But this is part of what I think I'm going to attempt to do going forward is to go back and rewatch some of these old book hauls or TBRs and determine if I've actually read the books that I've hauled and TBR'd. Because as you may notice, I do seem to have a problem constantly hauling too many books and then I'm not actually reading enough. So I have like this overabundance of books, it's a problem. So that's the plan, that's what I'm gonna do today. And I don't know, I just thought it would be fun, something different. And also I need to take note of the books that I need to read from these videos. So that's what we're gonna do. And we're also gonna laugh because I have no doubt that the, 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 the this video is, <laughs> going to be absolutely horrifying to me. Honestly, I think that a lot of my videos are still horrifying to me. <laughs> I'm not like a natural in front of the camera by any means. I think I've gotten better. I have improved over time a little bit, but I still have a lot to, uh, yeah. Let's go, let's do this. Hi. So I'm coming to give you a quick Christmas book haul. I got about 25 books for Christmas, although a few of them are a part of a larger series and so I'll probably just talk about the first one. Um, there are a mix <laughs> of different genres in here. Um, I'm not going to go in any specific order. I'm just going to kind of grab off the pile and and let that be that so and and don't mind the dogs <laughs> this is bear dog he's a mutt from Spain <laughs> and he's all oh I, she's chasing the shadows we'll see her later first I have labyrinth um, this is by Kate Moss and I originally uh, heard about this book when somebody recommended this to people who liked Outlander. Um, and I did. I was a big Outlander fan. Bear doggy, no. When, you know, the first few books. I think I read three or four. Anyway, so this is kind of historical fiction. Uh, I believe there's some romance. Um... And it comes, it's a larger series, and I actually received the first three. So we have Labyrinth. I'm not sure which one is which here, like which order they go in. But there's Sep Sepulcher, is that how you say it? And Citadel. And they are chunky, chunky, chunky. So I actually did read the first book in the series, Labyrinth and I gave it three stars. I thought that it was a really good historical fiction. It was pretty accurate as far as the facts based on that time period. And I thought that the writing was very descriptive and I enjoyed it, although I thought it was a little slow at times. So I do, like I mentioned in my review for that book, which I do have on here, that I do think I will continue in the series, although it's not high on my priority list. And I know that Kate Moss is a pretty prolific author. I think that she has quite a few books out there. So if you're interested in that type of book, definitely worth giving her a shot. 
So this says Let's move in, on. And I also received The Covenant of Water by Abraham Verghese. This is the Oprah Book Club pick, and it also is a chunky boy. This is also kind of, I think maybe it has some historical. Yeah, so it spans from 1900 to 1977, and it's set on in Kerala on India's Malabar coast. It follows three generations of a family that suffers a peculiar affliction. In every generation, at least one person dies by drowning. And in Kerala, water is everywhere. So I have not read this book. I'm going to make a note of it. This is a chunky, chunky book and with some magical realism elements. So I'm definitely still interested in it. It's definitely on my radar. I have not forgotten about it just waiting for the right time to squeeze it in. So let's continue on here. So this is, you know, literary fiction that's supposed to be um, a hymn to progress in medicine and to human understanding, a humbling testament to the hardships undergone by past generations for the sake of those alive today. So this is Crime and Punishment. And then I also have War and Peace. So one of my goals for this year in my reading is to get back into reading some classics. Um, probably only maybe one or two a year, especially if they're big chunkers like these two are. So I've already started Crime and Punishment, not very far, excuse me. Um, and I may do like a little reading vlog as I make my way through it. I literally don't think that I've picked up crime and punishment since I made that statement. <laughs> so here's the thing about me and classics. In theory, I love them. In reality, I find it very hard to actually pick them up and read them. I find that they are much less compelling to me, which is funny to say because there have been a few that I actually very much did enjoy, like Jane Eyre and uh, Wuther Wuthering Heights. But I think because of the actual like size of these books, I they are intimidating as all hell to me. And what, looking at this video, I'm like, oh man, I need to pick up that book and like give it a give it a read and like get into it. But when it comes to down to it. You know, I don't know. I just haven't, I haven't. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put crime and punishment on my list. But, but don't hold your breath. <laughs> Do not hold your breath, okay? So that's that. Then we have We Are the Dead by Mike Shackle. This is a pretty well talked about series on booktube and bookstagram. <laughs> um, and I don't know much about it. I know that it's part first book in a series. Um, it says the war is over the enemy won. A debut epic fantasy full of crunching revolutionary action, twisted magic and hard choices in dark times. I have not read this one. Uh, I actually have kind of forgotten about it. So I will make a note. We are the dead. This is, this is not very good. <laughs> Let's go. Then we have Legion by William Peter Blatty. So last year or two years ago, I read The Exorcist, finally. So The Exorcist was a movie that I had watched too young as a kid and was really terrified by it and would have nightmares well into adulthood. <laughs> and so I put off reading The Exorcist because I was just afraid it was going to scare the pants off me. This, on the other hand, is, which I originally thought this was um, the follow-up to The Exorcist, but it's not. I believe it's more of a murder mystery Actually, I do 
actually think that is the follow-up to the exorcist ignore me uh, but i have not read legion it is still on my radar absolutely 100 percent still on my radar i will write it down just you know for continuity's sake but i haven't forgotten about it i definitely hope to get to it soon i've heard that it's very good okay okay let's go let's just skip forward here then I have Witherward. Welcome to a London not like our own. This is by Hannah Mathewson. It's a really pretty cover. This says, Welcome to Witherward, to a London that is not quite like our own. Here it's summertime in February. <laughs> the underground is the cavern of wonders and magic fills the streets. But this London is a city divided, split between six rival magi magical factions, each with their own extraordinary talents. And the alpha of changelings, Gideon Ravenswood, has gone rogue, threatening the fragile accords that hold the city together. I have not read Witherward, and it's not really on my radar. I, I definitely think that I would still like to read it at some point, but... Mm. Not high on my list for, you know, high on my priorities. And as you can see, some things have not changed. My dogs are still nuts. You know? Let's move on. Oh my God. Feist. Um, he's a pretty well-known fantasy author. I have not read anything by him yet. This says... A classic fantasy literature that no true fan should be without opens this tale of magic, might, and adventure. I have not read The Magician. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say I've forgotten about it. Again, just has moved down in the priority list. But I do really want to read some Feist. So I may have to push that sucker back up. You know what I'm saying? Let's... Let's go from here. Is that what we're gonna do? And a survival story. Next we have Between Two Fires by Christopher Buhlman, an epic tale of medieval horror. Again, I've heard of this on booktube. And again, it's kind of like a historical fiction, fantasy um, story. Says a brutal knight offered one final chance at salvation. A troubled priest, last survivor of his parish, drowning himself in wine and guilt. A young girl orphaned by the Black Death, obeying the commands of angels both terrible and beautiful. This trio will undertake a journey across a medieval French countryside decimated by war and plague, encountering along the way martyrs and saints, brigands and fools, the damned and their hellish masters. They have little chance to save mankind, but they might, just might, save their own souls. I have not read that one. What is it called? Between Two Fires. I have not read that one either. Oh, man. This is getting ugly. I mean, I knew it was going to be ugly, to be honest. Oh. A pretty popular one, I believe. Um, it's called the Gulag Archipelago, 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 by Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Um, I believe this is this author's experience. Yeah, chilling report of his arrest, interrogation, and interrogation, which exposed to the world the vast bureaucracy of the secret police that haunted the Soviet society. So I typically don't read a lot of novels. So I definitely still want to read this book. Again, it's one of those things where I don't, like I mentioned here, read a lot of nonfiction. So it's not something I, I like lean towards. I definitely have found in the past that when I do want to read nonfiction, it's 
often better for me to go into it in audiobook format. Yeah, so I don't know. This may be one that I read as like a an in-between. So like two books at a time. I pick this one up when I need a break from my, my main read kind of thing. You know, I need to do that. I really should. I've heard it's really, really good and interesting. And after recently reading City of Thieves, and it talks about the Siege of Leningrad, uh, I'm even more interested in this account, this nonfiction about Russia and their prison, the Gulag. So let's get on that. Ooh, okay. Oh my goodness, another red book. <laughs> I didn't plan this, I swear. This is The September House by Carissa Orlando. Um, I believe this is like a haunted house story, thriller. I did read The September House and I did a review video on The September House. I actually really very much enjoyed this book. I believe I gave it a four stars. I'm pretty sure it was a four star read for me. It is like a satirical kind of haunted house story that also deals with some heavier issues covertly. <laughs> I very much enjoy the September house. Highly recommend to check it out. Let's go on. So this next one is a sci-fi Ascension by Nicholas Binge. This one too has a pretty new release. It's been all over booktube and Instagram, so I'm sure it doesn't need much of an explanation. But apparently a snow-covered mountain appears in the Pacific Ocean and no one knows how to explain its existence. Considers the limitations of science and faith and examines both the beautiful and unsettling sides of human nature. I really- I have not read Ascension. I still very much have it on my radar. It's not one that I have forgotten about. I'm just kind of waiting for the right time, you know? Motto, story of my life, you know? Just waiting for the right time. Let's move on. Science fiction, Two Like the Lightning by Ada Palmer. Um, this one, I've heard, I think Tori talking about this one. Um, it says, Mycroft Canner is a convict. For his crimes, he is required, as is the custom of the, excuse me, 25th century to wander the world being useful to all he meets. Carlisle Foster is a senseer, a spiritual counselor in a world that has outlawed the public practice of religion, but which also knows that the inner lives of humans cannot be wished away. I have not read to like the lightning either. Are we surprised? No, no, we're not surprised. I'm not surprised at all. On to the next one. These next two books are a duology, I think. And I believe they are YA, which I honestly am not a huge YA reader. I don't, I don't necessarily look for romance in my, in my books. I do every now and then I like a good romance, but for the most part, I stick with adult. Um, it says, the snow is soon revealed to be an even more horrific mistake. Uh, the Broken Binding, and they are signed editions. So really, really pretty. I mean, look at that cover. Yeah, and look at this one. Great detail. Yeah, I've not read this duology. I still have it on my shelves. It's not high on my list. Like I said, it is YA and I don't tend to gravitate towards YA. I, I will keep it obviously mostly because they are from the Broken Binding and their special editions. And uh, who knows, maybe one day I will read them. Stranger things have happened. <laughs> on to the next one that I have that is not 
in the room with me that I will put a picture up is to swim in a sea of stars by Christopher Paolini. I'm actually reading that one right now. I'm about halfway through. Uh, it's another sci-fi, um, adventure story. Um, yeah, I'm liking it. So as you can tell, as you hear, heard, as you heard, I did read this one and I didn't love it. I'm pretty sure I gave it like a two and a half stars, maybe. Did a review video for that. Go check it out if you're interested. Uh, it just didn't really work for me uh, for whatever reason, which I explain in detail in that video. It looks like this video is about to end, so, but there's a whole nother series, so I'm not really sure why it does that, but let's, let's go on. I have thought book. It's actually the series and I got six of them as Bernard Cornwell's The Last Kingdom. And this one is about Uthred and Alfred. And it's also like historical fiction. And I'm sure everybody. Yeah, I have not read The Last Kingdom either. I didn't really forget about it. Uh, but, you know, I don't know. I would like to read some Bernard Cornwell again. I did read one of his other books last year. I forget which one it was, but I really liked it. I thought he's a great writer. I think he does a great job at character development and portraying these kind of well-known characters in a whole new light and as well as creating like the atmosphere around them. He, he definitely makes it feel very dark old time, middle ages kind of setting. I thought it was a little bit slower in some spots, uh, but definitely created some intrigue and interest for me. And I definitely want to continue in that series as well as picking up this one. So anyway, I'm pretty sure that's the last, yeah, it is. So that's where we'll leave it. But actually wasn't as mortified uh, about this video as I thought that I would be. I think that if you went to play a drinking game watching this, you could drink every time you hear me say, um, but otherwise I feel like it was pretty on par with what I do. I mean, I, like I said, I'm, I'm no great on screen uh, personality, but yeah, it could have been worse. I suppose it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Thank goodness. <laughs>I just realized that I didn't say that I only read two out of these, what, 28 books I said, which is pretty sad. It's pretty pathetic. I'm really disappointed in myself. My goal in the next two months is to read at least one more of these books. Okay, one more in the next two months. I think that's definitely doable. It is like the middle of July right now. And so that gives me until mid-September to read one. Just one of these books. I'm not really sure which one that's going to be. Maybe I'll do The Magician. You know, Raymond Feist. That's supposed to be a really great fantasy option. So, I don't know. No promises. We'll see. Back to the video. <laughs> Are there any of these books that you are really interested in and would like for me to read so that I can talk about them more? Let me know in the comments down below. I think that's going to do it, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this little flashback revisit video and that you enjoyed listening to me talk crap about myself. <laughs> Glad that you're here and I will see you guys again soon. Bye! I have technology so annoying.